What's up everyone, Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength. I got a guest in the building, Brian Alzu with Never State Athletics, up, coming all the way from Maryland. I'm excited to do some training, uh, get some content. I'm not really sure what the viewers are looking for. I, any ideas? I don't know, man. So. What's up everyone, Alan Thrall here with Brian Alzer of Never State Athletics. All his info is gonna be down in the description area. Make sure you check him out. Let's get to it. We're doing a Q&A, questions that were submitted on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, if you guys wanna be featured on the following or uh, future Q&As, make sure to follow us. Uh, it's gonna be real informal. Brian, if you see any questions that you wanna answer, spit it out and let's get to it. All right, to start, have you, have you ever hosted a strongman competition? I have not. Okay, so I guess this would be more for me or maybe if you host one in the future. But uh, how do you go about choosing events for a contest that you host? Do you try to pick events that you don't see often on purpose? And on and on and on. Right on. Um, so first off, uh, you have to know basically that all strongman competitions have five events. There's usually some sort of press, some sort of medley, carrying medley, uh, a loading event, a deadlift or a grip event. So you kind of follow that uh, format. Uh, but first and foremost, you would look at what equipment do you have access to as a promoter. Um, so that's that. You also want to look at what's going to be easiest and smoothest in a competition. If you have a lot of moving parts, that means you're going to have a lot of volunteers working their ass off all day, which might not be ideal. Uh, so you just have to take a look at all of those uh, factors, as well as uh, if you were a competitor, would you want to do a heavy deadlift event uh, or back intensive event every single, you know, five in a row? Probably not. All right, so here's a question for you. Uh, Chris asks, how can I get a sweet beard gains like Alan Thrall? It's not gonna happen, just give up. It's not gonna happen. Another person asked me if I would ever consider growing a beard <laughs> as epic as that, and it's just not possible. Like, it, no, I it's can't. All, it's genetics. You, you have to know, you need to stay in your lane. <laughs> and growing a beard is not my lane. It'd be big and red, and my awesome. wife would leave me. That's, that'd be it. <laughs> All right, Brian, what's more? Savage Life 91 says, what's more impressive, a heavy squat or a heavy deadlift? Both. Both are pretty darn impressive. I think for different people, it's gonna be a different answer. Some people that really struggle on the deadlift, and there's other people that really struggle on the squat, and whatever you struggle with, I think making massive gains in that department is very, very impressive. There's some people who are absolutely built to deadlift and they bench 100 pounds and they squat 200 pounds and then they deadlift 800 pounds. An 800 pound deadlift is impressive no matter what you weigh, what you look like, how you're built, don't get me wrong. But it's a big difference for someone who, uh, who actually had to work after that. If somebody is built specifically for a lift, to me it doesn't really, it's not as impressive to me as somebody who actually had to work for it because as both lifters in this game for a very long time, you know what goes into something when somebody is not built for benching. You guys have seen people with arms that can scratch their knees when they're standing up. If that person gets a big bench, that is super impressive because they had to work harder for it than, than a guy who has really long arms and has an awesome deadlift. Right, I think it's a lot more common to see someone who deadlifts a lot uh, but doesn't squat very much, but the other way around, not so common. Usually if someone has a big squat, their deadlift is uh, right around the same that they squat Absolutely. if they do struggle with it. Uh, so it's more common to see a 600 pound deadlift and a 400 pound squat uh, than the other way around. So, Or like you said, if somebody has like a six, 700 pound squat, they're going to they have where like a six, 700 pound deadlift. Right, right. Like this guy and this guy. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna cover this. 
Not because I want to, but because I get asked this a lot. All right, is that the hemorrhoid question? No, no, okay. uh, let, let me ask that one. Alan, <laughs> and this, this is one we read earlier. Where do hemorrhoids come from? From the lifting or the diet? Uh, actually, if we want to get real scientific, hemorrhoids come from your butthole. Pow, another guy asked, have you ever thought of having Alan trim his beard and use it as a wig? Because I'm assuming you are bald. I'm not bald, people. <laughs> I have hair. I just wear hats because my hair is like Velcro, and I hate it. That would be some awful hair <laughs> on top of your head. I don't know. It, it might be better than what I have. All right. So, Senior Gor Gori, we'll go with that. Okay. Uh, what would be a good way to work your upper body conditioning slash cardio with just a basic barbell? Conditioning, uh, I would definitely say if you threw if you threw something in like complexes. If you don't know what a complex is, that's where you pick up the barbell and you do a specified number of reps and sets of a certain number of exercises before you put the bar back down. So you may pick up the barbell and you might do eight barbell rows to eight hand cleans to eight front squats to eight overhead presses to eight back squats to eight behind the neck presses to eight good mornings to eight deadlifts and then put the bar down. I don't care who you are, that will make you puke. That is brutally hard. Um, also for upper body conditioning, doing things like the Tabata protocol. If you don't know what the Tabata protocol is, you'd need to probably read a little bit more, but that's 20 seconds work, 10 seconds rest for eight rounds. So it's four minutes of work. If you do something like Z presses with an empty bar or a very lightly loaded barbell, have a really good time with that. Um, you could definitely get anything you want with any tool. It, it just, uh, you just need to get creative and figure out. But for me, complexes are probably one of the things that I hate most in life. And then uh, the Z press, especially as a finisher after your main shoulder strength work, will absolutely destroy you. Yep, that's exactly it. Those are in one of your mindset challenges, that barbell complex. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's just high intensity interval training. A lot of work at high intensity, shorter amount of rest, multiple times, keeping your heart rate up for an extended period of time. And don't think about conditioning as an upper body or lower body type of thing. Like, uh, think about moving as inefficiently as you possibly can. So, a burpee is an awesome exercise for conditioning until you get really good at doing burpees because you learn all the little tricks and tips of how to do the, the movement as efficiently as possible. The more efficient you become at something, the less it is useful as a conditioning tool because your whole idea is just get completely smoked. But if you're thinking upper body versus lower body, think your entire body and both will become conditioned. All right, this guy, uh, his name's Mark and I actually worked with him. He's from Spain. What's up, Mark? Uh, he came to visit on Tame Strength probably last year. But he says, uh, why with higher weights on the deadlift is it more difficult to lean back uh, or get yourself behind the bar? Could this be a weakness on the upper back? I think that the question should kind of be flipped. Um, you can get away with certain things with light weights that you can't get away with heavy weights. Um, so you actually might be sitting really trying to throw your weight back with light weights um, and setting your hips down way too low. Uh, and this is kicking the bar out around your knees um, and you're able to get away with it. But now that the weight's getting heavy, that's becoming your limiting factor. So you're thinking, I can't sit back as low uh, or as back as far when the weights are heavy because that's actually a problem and a flaw in your technique that's more apparent with heavy weights. Um, so maybe you shouldn't be thinking about sitting back as far uh, because again, when those weights are heavy, it's either gonna jam into your knees if you're sitting back too far or the barbell is gonna have to go out and around your knees and it's just not ideal to pull the bar in a curved line. Um, so I don't know, hopefully that answers your question. Do you have anything further off that? I think also a lot of people on the, come on, <laughs> it's life together. I, I think a lot of people on the squat and the deadlift think of them as a lower body or a back movement and they 100% are, don't get that wrong. Uh, but they are very much a core movement. So a lot of times when you miss a squat, it's because your core failed. If you stuck yourself in a leg press, right? Because I think of the leg press almost like a deadlift because of the body positioning. And if you're doing deadlift correctly, then you're pushing the world away. You're not picking the bar up. 
So same idea when you are doing a deadlift, if you think about sitting in a leg press, the only difference is that your body is locked in and supported by a seat. If your body actually kind of uh, starts folding over and you have a failure in your core, then that bar is gonna start traveling in that bar path. And the more that it travels outside of that bar path, and we're talking by minuscule amounts of an inch. If that happens, then it's going to get thrown onto all kinds of different parts of your body because you're not using your leverages the way that you should. So I think building up your core strength, learning how to breathe and brace correctly, and getting more air into your belly would allow you to hold a better position so that that bar can't travel as far and then you're essentially just leg pressing. And just like on the squat or the deadlift, the limiting factor isn't typically the leg strength or the back strength. Uh, I think you should try to drive both those up. I think that will help you with your numbers. But I think driving up a core strength is a big thing that a lot of people neglect. And if you're not working it, then you're probably leaving a bunch of pounds out there somewhere with unicorns. How, how can I tr train strongman and powerlifting if I don't have access to a rack in a commercial gym? And I was like, and he said, but don't say find a better gym. I'm like, <laughs> find a better gym. <laughs> yeah, really? How does everyone else do it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's w S A S three S. Although you're a strong man, you have a large powerlifting following and some disagreements arise in the two camps, especially regarding giant sets. What do you say to critics who say that it isn't good for building strength in your main lifts? Um, I would say you have to try it for yourself. Uh, for me, that's literally how I've lifted for the better part of my life. Um, I enjoy lifting weights. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy lifting weights. However, I don't enjoy lifting weights and then sitting around and talking to people and then going back and getting another set and then spending two and a half hours at the gym when really I got about 15 minutes worth of work done. That's not my style and I can speak for Alan on this, I'm pretty sure. We don't have three hours to spend lifting weights anymore. Like it, it's yeah. just, life is too busy. So in order to combat that, and I, at, in my previous job, I did not have a lot of free time and I would disappear for a bunch of days and then I'd come back and I'd need to fit a bunch of things into a very short amount of time before I was off again. And uh, with that in mind, I, I started using the giant sets with the antagonistic muscle group to the main mover to an ab exercise and I use that ab exercise as part of my rest and I take about 90 seconds rest and I run it and I just go, go, go. At first, I'll be honest with you, strength may suffer a little bit, but not as much as you think. And then within a couple weeks, it's just your body getting used to the work capacity. It's not that you're not as strong. If you look at studies about doing a bent over row with a bench press back to back, it shows that there is not a whole lot that gets taken away from the bench press. Some people actually believe that it helps your bench press to do the rows first. I will tell you that is how my shoulders have stayed healthy because I do pulling motions in the same plane as my pressing motions right before my pressing motions. That has kept my shoulders safe. It has helped me get really strong and get a lot more work done in the same amount of time. And I'm not saying that's the right choice for everybody, just like squatting every day isn't the right choice for everybody. But I'm saying you don't know if you don't try. And before you go and pass judgment on anything on the internet, I'm not talking about anything he puts out or I put out. Figure it out for yourself, right? Like spend some time and give it a fair try. Don't do something for two weeks and then come back and bash people online and say, that's stupid, that doesn't work. You gave it two weeks, man. Give it six months. Like six months is a good amount of time to find out if something works or it doesn't work. And if you don't wanna spend six months figuring out what works and doesn't work for you, you're gonna have training AD and you're gonna jump around from program to program thing to thing, following the new fad, you're probably gonna get into shake weights and bow flexes. So you just need to be able to spend the time and enjoy the process. Uh, yeah, there you go. Good answer. All right, here's another one that, that I looked over earlier and it, it was very basic. They just said, how do you feel about CrossFit? And this is a loaded question, I feel, because if somebody says the word CrossFit in a strongman gym or a powerlifting gym, People lose their minds. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, we're not that different people. Like they like to lift heavy things, you like to lift heavy things. They might do it for more reps or a longer period of time, but they're still doing deadlifts, squats, bench, I, I guess. I don't know, I don't do CrossFit. Um, 
straw man and powerlifters, sometimes they don't get along. Everyone wants to be in their little cliche niche mm -hmm. and feel really special because they do something. But honestly, every single straw man I know squats, deadlifts, bench presses, overhead presses. Every single crossfit that I know does the same thing. Every single powerlifter I know does the same thing. Every single weightlifter might do things a little bit differently, but they're still doing squats, deadlifts. We're all doing the same things, people. Like, there's no reason to get this emotionally tied up in what someone else is doing. It's not affecting you, who cares? Yeah. How do you feel about it? That's uh, pretty much the same, same thing I got to say. Um, it's, it turns into a huge dick measuring contest. Oh, they're only using a 200 pound stone. I could do a 350 pound stone. Who cares? Uh, it's a different sport. Whatever you enjoy doing, just do it. Uh, and I think that CrossFit gets a bad uh, reputation because there are a lot of people, I guess, who uh, ruin CrossFit uh, by doing it incorrectly, bad form. Uh, people who are just starting out might be doing too much weight or whatever the case is. But that's with any sport or any genre of lifting. There are people at every commercial gym who are totally butchering the bench press. That doesn't mean we need to go around saying powerlifting is stupid. Look at these guys trying to bench press like a bunch of idiots. Uh, at the top level of CrossFit, those guys are machines. They know what they're doing. Um, just because there's a 50 year old soccer mom doing CrossFit incorrectly does not mean we need to bash CrossFit. So there, there are people, like you said, in every single sport that you could point to and be like, they're hurting the sport because of their form or whatever. We, we actually, we've talked a lot over the past couple of days. And one thing that drives me crazy is form Nazis. Like I get that you need good form and that's the safe way to do it and whatever. But you're telling me if you've done any level of a heavy weight on a deadlift, let's just say for instance, you're saying that on your way up there to a 600 pound deadlift, things never got a little squirrely for you. You were sure that it was 100% perfect every single time because that's not, that's not really how you got there. Like there were certain reps where things got a little ugly. That just happens. You try to mitigate the risk and you try to do everything that you can to not hurt yourself or be able to compete in the sport as long as possible. But guys, like if your form is dead set perfect all the time, you're gonna be a weak person with dead set form all the time. Right. Like, I'm not saying go completely crazy and look like a scared cat doing deadlifts, but I am saying like, when you're going for a PR or somebody posts a PR video and people bash them like crazy, remember it's a PR. Right. It's a personal record for a reason. Their, most time personal limit. records, yeah, it's, it's ugly. Like most people's PRs are ugly. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, five months down the road, that PR is no longer ugly. The form is spot on on that one and there's a new ugly rep that's heavier. It just, it happens. So if you're bashing it because of people's form or because it's not what you do, there's, there's really no point, people. Like, spend more time working on trying to better yourself than trying to pick out how someone else that you'll never meet in your entire life does something incorrectly. That's being a critic, and being a critic doesn't do much for anybody. All right, guys, that's it for now. We got more questions and more answers. Go check out Brian's channel for part two. All his information is down in the description area. Make sure you check it out. That's it, and always remember, Tread on time! <laughs>